uh, it would be talking to my younger self, if you will, as they say, uh, that um, it's okay to understand that you don't know um, and reach out and find ways to know just so you can be better, so you can make those around you better, which is what you're uh, supposed to be there for. Tom. Well, the old saying that I wish I knew then what I know now. You know, like when I started coaching, I think the only thing around was Howie Meeker's little videos, 15 minute videos, you know, or as organized ice. And then you got your remembering what you did uh, when you played. You know, so you start off with not that great of a base of how to run a practice. Like I, I was a phys ed teacher, so I had kids all the time that I was had to organize and do stuff. So I was always, you know, because of that, I had the background of uh, teaching phys ed. So I think I've always ran good practices generally. But uh, yeah, just knowing, you know, having a better knowledge base. But uh, yeah, you start with what you got and. And I, I made the point of George brought guys in the starting in the late seventies, about seventy six. Nine years he brought in international guys. I think he brought in three Swedes and Bukot came twice. And uh, um, Roger Nielsen. Roger Nielsen was there, and uh, that's where I met Johanny, and that's where my greatest leap in coaching was from him because, you know, he of course being captain of Finland for years and basically as a father of their way of doing things. And then he started bringing me to Finland and I saw the club system and I learned, you know, how really emphasis on how to organize the ice and this sort of thing to make everything efficient. So it was just a progression of uh, what you learn. And I, I've always gone out of my way to be updated. I think I've gone to, I went to every Hockey Canada symposium they had for those years. They had them every second year, and then I've gone to about eight world championship coaching conferences. So I've always been kind of, uh, you know, and then it, we've really lost something in Calgary because ever since the scandal with the Hockey Canada, the under-20 under team, Hockey Canada lost all his sponsorship. Nike pulled out and all this sort of thing. And they used to fly all the kids from most of the players in Canada are from the East. That's where most of the people live in Canada. And they'd fly them to Calgary to practice at Windsport. All the teams. Now, you know, the under 20 junior team is they're training in Ontario and Windsport doesn't bring in all these teams anymore. So 2022, I, you know, I went and I watched practices. I took 130 videos of what they're doing in practice. And I look at that. That's how I stay updated and see what the new, you know, the young coaches are doing. But uh, that's kind of dried up now. So it's a kind of a different landscape that we're working on. So anyways, that's kind of my background of how I try to stay up to date with things. See, Peter and... <clears throat> You know, Tom was ahead of his time. <clears throat> like, and if I was starting again, I would have studied more. I ended up sort of, if I happened upon something, I would use it and try it. If it worked, I made it work. If it didn't, I got help. But there was so much opportunity, and I stayed in Canada, unlike Tom, and I only went to two of George Kingston's classes. Tom had gone to every one. And then he runs into European coaches. We all know how advanced they are in terms of teaching, efficiency, the whole nine yards. So back in the arrow, in the, I was learning to teach and learning to coach. He was already ahead of his time. In fact, 
out of the league of Hockey Canada's development programs. So now the fact he's doing what he's doing, and you know, I had to sort of do some uh, sensitive puck handling so that he could plan those ice times. But I think it's obvious there's nobody more qualified to do it. Now, if you had to run those ice times, it would be discomforting. But it's going to be good for you to do that. And that's something forced upon them. Would I want them running my ice times? Sure, I could. But I know Tom at that age level, he's going to get it bang on with what they need to do. So, Tom, when you talk about Howie Meeker, I ran my first hockey school, and of course, I was the bobblehead of Hockey Alberta. I went to every clinic, and I learned so much that I could bring back and play with, and it really, really helped me. But when I was running hockey schools, um, I came upon, and you taught in our system, I think it was the 10, 12-minute, 35-millimeter films by Howie Meeker. Those were in the classroom session the eight years that I ran hockey schools. On the ice, I did Howie Meeker's basic book one. Now, Tom, he was the best deliberate teacher. I learned how to teach turning and how to play two-on-ones offensively and defensively, and I just copycatted that. It was my hockey school. We did it. I hired teachers that were coaches that did the same thing, and I came out of it learning more and getting pretty good results. And I don't think I've ever really invented anything new. Um, but the key here is the uh, ability to learn and continue to learning. And Tom's example of his lifetime and all the time he spent with all the different people in the game, I think it's uh, it's it's just awesome. Well, I think I think Wally that one advantage it was a disadvantage. But it was an advantage. I was never involved with Hockey Canada. I had such different ideas. They thought I was crazy. I remember once I showed Blue Coach's system and whatever, and they said, you can't play hockey this way. I mean, he just beat the Russians in the World Championship. The Russians always rotated left. They had, for a while there, Tikhanov only had left-handed shots. He didn't have Helmut Balderas on the team, who was one of the top probably three hockey players in the world, because he shot right-handed. So they all <laughs> rotated this way. Yeah. So the Czechs, to beat them, they had this left winger, defensive left winger system. And uh, they eventually did beat them with that. But But anyways, one of the neatest experiences I ever had is the Finnish Ice Hockey Association had me come to Viramaki, which is their center. And I ran their national hockey school for, I think three years, but maybe it was only two, I can't remember. I think I did it for three years. And I'd have their stars as my assistant coaches and NHL guys like Teppo Newmanen and Jurke Lume and all that. And they're the assistant coaches on the ice. Of course, I had them do the demonstration, not me, but, uh, because they appreciated that mixture of some Canadian stuff and their stuff because I, you know, working with with you. So I was pretty, uh, and then I'll also, when I went to Finland, your off was coaching TPS, the Russian Olympic coach. And he was thought of as the top skill, the top coach in Europe at that time. And we did some clinics together. So I picked up a lot of stuff from him. And then and then, when mm-hmm. I ended up in Salzburg, he came one week a month to Salzburg. But I'd known him for 10 years already. 
So just kind of not being a Hockey Canada guy, there was the benefit that people, you know, I, I, I think I got taken to seven different countries on three continents and in the States, different guys have brought me down to, uh, over the years, they brought me down to uh, 10 different States, I think. And just, just because of, I did things differently than other people. So. Yeah. Guy,